Nicholas Borbarki is the collective pseudonym under which a group of 20th century mathematicians, with the aim of reformulating mathematics on an extremely abstract and formal but self-contained basis, wrote a series of books beginning in 1935. With the goal of grounding all of mathematics on set theory, the group strove for rigor and generality. Their work led to the discovery of several concepts and terminologies still used, and influenced modern branches of mathematics. While there is no Nicholas Borbarki, the Borbarki Group, officially known as the Association des Collaborateurs de Nicholas Borbarki, has an office at the École Normale Supérieure in Paris. Foundation. In 1934, young French mathematicians from various French universities felt the need to form a group to jointly produce textbooks that they could all use for teaching. André Vial organized the first meeting on 10 December 1934 in the basement of the Parisian Grill Room, while all participants were attending a conference in Paris. Books by Boerbaki Borbaki's main work is the Elements of Mathematics series. This series aims to be a completely self-contained treatment of the core areas of modern mathematics. Assuming no special knowledge of mathematics, it tries to take up mathematics from the very beginning, proceed axiomatically and give complete proofs. Set theory, algebra, topology, functions of one real variable, topological vector spaces, integration, and later commutative algebra, light theory, spectral theory. The book Varietes Différentielles et Analytics was a fascicule de résultat, that is, a summary of results, on the theory of manifolds, rather than a worked-out exposition. A final volume 9 on spectral theory from 1983 marks the presumed end of the publishing project, but a further commutative algebra fascicle was produced in 1998 and the eighth chapter of Algebra was published in 2012. Influence on Mathematics in General Notations introduced by Borbaki include the symbol for the empty set in a dangerous bend symbol, and the terms injective, surjective, and bijective. The emphasis on rigor may be seen as a reaction to the work of Henry Poincaré, who stressed the importance of free-flowing mathematical intuition, at a cost of completeness in presentation. The impact of Borbicki's work initially was great on many active research mathematicians worldwide. For example, our time is witnessing the creation of a monumental work, an exposition of the whole of present-day mathematics. Moreover this exposition is done in such a way that the common bond between the various branches of mathematics become clearly visible, that the framework which supports the whole structure is not apt to become obsolete in a very short time, and that it can easily absorb new ideas. Emil Artin, 474-479, it provoked some hostility, too. Mostly on the side of classical analysts, they approved of rigor but not of high abstraction. Around 1950, also, some parts of geometry were still not fully axiomatic in less prominent developments one way or another. These were brought into line with the new foundational standards, or quietly dropped. This led to a gulf with the way theoretical physics was practiced. Borbaki's direct influence has decreased over time. This is partly because certain concepts which are now important, such as the machinery of category theory, are not covered in the treatise. The completely uniform and essentially linear referential structure of the books became difficult to apply to areas closer to current research than the already mature ones treated in the published books, and thus publishing activity diminished significantly from the 1970s. It also mattered that, while especially algebraic structures can be naturally defined in Boerbeke's terms, there are areas where the Boerbaki approach was less straightforward to apply. On the other hand, the approach and rigor advocated by Boerbaki have permeated the current mathematical practices to such extent that the task undertaken was completed. This is particularly true for the less applied parts of mathematics. 
the Boabaki Seminar Series founded in post-World War II Paris continues. It has been going on since 1948, and contains more than 1,000 items. It is an important source of survey articles, with sketches of proofs. The topics range through all branches of mathematics, including sometimes theoretical physics. The idea is that the presentation should be on the level of specialists, but should be tailored to an audience which is not specialized in the particular field. The group accounts of the early days vary, but original documents have now come to light. The founding members were all connected to the École Normale Supérieure in Paris and included Henri Carton, Claude Chevalli, Jean Quillon, Jean Del Sarta, Jean Dudonnet, Charles Erisman, René de Possel, Zola Mandelbrodge and André Vial. There was a preliminary meeting towards the end of 1934. Jean Leray and Paul Dubrail were present at the preliminary meeting but dropped out before the group actually formed. Other notable participants in later days were Hyman Bass, Laurent Schwartz, Jean-Pierre Serre, Alexander Grothendieck, Jean-Louis Cozul, Samuel Ellenberg, Serge Lang and Roger Godement. The original goal of the group had been to compile an improved mathematical analysis text. It was soon decided that a more comprehensive treatment of all of mathematics was necessary. There was no official status of membership, and at the time the group was quite secretive and also fond of supplying disinformation. Regular meetings were scheduled, during which the group would discuss vigorously every proposed line of every book. Members had to resign by age 50. The atmosphere in the group can be illustrated by an anecdote told by Laurent Schwartz. Judonne regularly and spectacularly threatened to resign unless topics were treated in their logical order, and after a while others played on this for a joke. Goldman's wife wanted to see Dudonne announcing his resignation, and so on one occasion while she was there Schwartz deliberately brought up again the question of permitting the order in which measure theory and topological vector spaces were to be handled, to precipitate a guaranteed crisis. The name Bourbaki refers to a French general, Charles Denis Bourbaki. It was adopted by the group as a reference to a student anecdote about a hoax mathematical lecture, and also possibly to a statue, appraisal of the Bourbaki perspective. The underlying drive, in Violin Chevalier at least, was the perceived need for French mathematics to absorb the best ideas of the Gottingen school, particularly Hilbert and the modern algebra school of Emmy Noetha, Artin and van der Weyden. It is fairly clear that the Boerbaki point of view, while encyclopedic, was never intended as neutral, quite the opposite. It was more a question of trying to make a consistent whole out of some enthusiasms, for example for Hilbert's legacy, with emphasis on formalism and axiomatics. But always through a transforming process of reception and selection, their ability to sustain this collective, critical approach has been described as something unusual. The following is a list of some of the criticisms commonly made of the Boerbaki approach. Pierre Cartier, a Bourbaki member 1955-1983, commented explicitly on several of these points. Essentially no analysis beyond the foundations. Nothing about partial differential equations, nothing about probability. There is also nothing about combinatorics, nothing about algebraic topology, nothing about concrete geometry. And Boerbaki never seriously considered logic. Judonne himself was very vocal against logic. Anything connected with mathematical physics is totally absent from Boerbaki's text. Algorithmic content is not considered on topic and is almost completely omitted. Problem solving, in the sense of heuristics, receives less emphasis than axiomatic theory building. Analysis is treated, softly, without, hard, estimates. Measure theory is developed from a functional analytic perspective. Taking the case of locally compact measure spaces as fundamental focuses the presentation on radon measures and leads to an approach to measurable functions that is cumbersome, especially from the viewpoint of probability theory. Combinatorics is not discussed. Logic is treated minimally. 
applications are not covered. Furthermore, all Barkey make no use of pictures in the presentation. Pierre Cartier, in the article cited above, is quoted as later saying the Bourbaki were Puritans, and Puritans are strongly opposed to pictorial representations of truths of their faith. In general, Bourbaki has been criticized for reducing geometry as a whole to abstract algebra and soft analysis. Judonne, a speaker for Bourbaki. Public discussion of, and justification for, Bourbaki's thoughts has in general been through Jean Giudonnet writing under his own name. He also wrote extensively under his own name, nine volumes on analysis, perhaps in belated fulfillment of the original project or pretext, and also on other topics mostly connected with algebraic geometry. While Giudonnet could reasonably speak on Bowlbeke's encyclopedic tendency and tradition, it may be doubted, after innumerable Frank T.A.I.'s toy, Giudonnet, remarks at the meetings, whether all others agreed with him about mathematical writing and research. In particular, Serre has often championed greater attention to problem solving, within number theory especially, not an area treated in the main Bourbaki texts. Giudonne stated the view that most workers in mathematics were doing ground-clearing work, in order that a future Riemann could find the way ahead intuitively open. He pointed to the way the axiomatic method can be used as a tool for problem-solving, for example by Alexander Grothendieck. Others found him too close to Grothendieck to be an unbiased observer. Comments in Pal Turan's 1970 speech on the award of a Fields Medal to Alan Baker about theory building and problem solving were a reply from the traditionalist camp at the next opportunity. Grothendieck having received the previous Fields Medal in absentia in 1966, Bourbaki's influence on mathematics education. While several of Bourbaki's books have become standard references in the fields, some have felt that the austere presentation makes them unsuitable as textbooks. The book's influence may have been at its strongest when few other graduate-level texts in current pure mathematics were available. Between 1950 and 1960, in the longer term, the Manifesto of Bourbaki has had a definite and deep influence. In secondary education the new math movement corresponded to teachers influenced by Bourbaki. In France the change was secured by the Liknerovich Commission. The influence on graduate education in pure mathematics is perhaps most noticeable in the treatment now current of lie groups and lie algebras. Giudonnet at one point said, one can do nothing serious without them, for which he was reproached, but the change in lie theory to its everyday usage owes much to the type of exposition Bourbaki championed. Beforehand Jacques Hadamard despaired of ever getting a clear idea of it.